Thank you so much for joining me for another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed these bullet holes on this canvas. It's really easy to do, and it's basically a remake of a video I made probably about a month ago, uh, showing you a technique that I was taught over 20 odd years ago. And personally, I prefer using this method. This is even easier. If you haven't watched the other video and you want to check it out, then I'll pop a link up here somewhere. But let's get into this tutorial right now so you can see how I created those bullet holes. Okay, so what I've done is I've just grabbed myself some uh, regular A4 copy paper. I'm just going to fold it in half, like so. And then just going to tear out a half circle shape. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit irregular. Got a couple of sheets here so we can have a couple of goes. Try and do different sizes. We'll do one more in there. Do the same with this sheet. Again, just fold it in half and Tear out some different sizes. The reason I'm tearing them is because I want them to be uneven. I want the edges to be uneven. You'll see why later in the video. All right, so when you fold it out, you've got that going on. So that one there, not so good, but we can always come back in and pull a bit more out. There you go. Fix the shape a little bit. It's a bit better. Okay, and then this one. So not too bad. Same sort of thing. This can go up a bit more. That one. So let's just come back in and tear a bit of this off. And we'll tear a bit of that off. Just kind of want them a little bit more round. They don't have to be perfect, but see, that's a bit better now. That's rounder. That's still a bit square, but we'll still run with it. Might just fix this one up. We'll just run with those two. Okay, so using a light gray, put some of that in my airbrush. And those templates are going to become our loose masks to create the bullet holes. So I've sprayed this with this green base. I'm gonna put the bullet holes over the top. So now coming in with our template, I'm gonna hold that in place and spray our gray over the top. Now you could also use silver. I'm just gonna stick with gray. And we're gonna scatter these bullet holes. Now that's why I tore them by hand. I want it to be a rough edge. Here's all different types. use the other page. So if you don't like certain ones, then just ignore them. Try and keep the airbrush angled directly on the surface so that you get less overspray, so it's nice and sharp around it. This is a real big one. So if you're using silver, you just have to be mindful that overspray does travel and the metallic will go everywhere. So what you need to do is generally you'll have to mask off the whole entire page. You can also, if you don't like one totally, what you can do is, say for instance, I like that there. 
right? But I don't like this side as much. So you can see how this particular hole there isn't sort of circular, it's kind of cut off a bit straight there. So what I did was I've sprayed this part and now I'm gonna flip it and line that back up again to there. And I'll just paint in using the other side, which will effectively finish that off. You can neaten that up at the top there. And that'll give it a more, more of a circular appearance, which is what we're after. So I'll do a couple more, a couple more smaller ones. So just stagger your sizes. these down here. Probably do the same with this one. Flip it like so. Just make sure that it's dry on this side. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. So now I'm going to do the entry point of where the bullet's gone through using black. And I'm going to use this circle template. Find a reasonably similar sized circle. So what you want is a circle big enough so that you still have some gray around the edge, but you don't want too much gray showing around the edge. Okay, so we're gonna go with that one. Now to stop the overspray, I've got some just bits of uh, copy paper that I've uh, torn up with some masking tape. And that's going to be enough to mask quickly mask off around it and make sure that I don't get any of that black overspray in other areas. It also helps to hold the template in place. And then it's just as easy as spraying straight over it. Okay, so now we're going to repeat that step. Moving right along, we've got to pick another circle to create our bullet hole. That one will work. Let's hold that into place. Again, masking around it just to protect everything. Carefully unmask it with the template. Again, moving right along. Probably use the same one again. So now it's a little bit harder to see because you want to be pretty much in the center. So you can either clean the template or just flip it. That'll give you a bit of a visual. I'm keeping my hand there just to hold it into place and then putting these, this masking around it just to protect while I spray. So I'm working on uh, canvas here. This is um, just straight on the canvas. So I didn't do anything specific to it, didn't prime it. Okay, so same procedure until all the bullet holes have the black in them. And we'll move on to the next step of rendering. So if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome for all of our regular viewers, welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, by all means, give it the thumbs up, share it out and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I'm doing two videos per week at the moment and I hope you're enjoying all of the new content that's coming out and you're finding it informative. So obviously if you've got uh, similar size bullet holes then you just uh, can keep your template masked up but because I've got a variation I'm checking every individual one that I'm uh, spraying to make sure that the uh, 
size of the hole is going to match up with the outside edge of that bullet hole. Try and make sure that the template is sitting flat so that you get a nice sharp edge. And you can see I'm angling the airbrush directly on top of it so that the air is helping to keep it into place. You can see when it's a fresh one and you haven't got any overspray, it's very easy to see where you're uh, lining it up. So you don't need to use that flip method, but very easy, simple effect to achieve. Could have actually gone over a little bit, but not a problem. You can see I'm a fair distance away as well from the template and just building up that tone. I'm not trying to saturate it. You don't want to be too close either because then um, you might get a bit more of that sort of an effect. You can see it's sort of bled under a little bit. But, uh, you know, building your tones or your colours lightly is the way to go rather than tr just trying to smash it on. Um, you don't want to go too wet because you could possibly create a run and then that could drip down underneath your template which wouldn't be very good. Just take your time. So you can see I'm just reusing these uh, paper masks. Very easy to make. When I'm done I'll just chuck them out. Alright. That is all of them. So just a quick shot of how the canvas is looking so far. Up close. Now I'm going to start to add some uh, shading and highlights to finish off these bullet holes. So what I want to do now using transparent black. So this is transparent base mixed with black and reducer. I'm going to just uh, shade on this top edge on all of the bullet holes and this is going to give it a 3D effect that that's been sort of damaged and pushed in a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the original paper templates that I made and I'm going to find a similar edge to that. I think that's pretty, pretty good. If you can get the exact one even better. I'm just going to hit that top edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm aiming, kind of aiming for just up here, sort of so that half of the overspray lands on the top of the template and half of the overspray lands there. So I've got to, I might lock this by doing this, but I've got to kind of hold that into place like so. Hopefully you can see that. And you can see that's starting to make it look a bit more 3D now. I've come off that edge, so what I'm going to do now is grab some other torn bits of paper here and just clean that up a little bit and follow that, um, that edge a little bit more accurately. And then I'll do a little bit of freehand as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that on all of them. Get that in and then again freehand. If you're not confident with doing the freehand part of it, then stick with using the paper template. So you can really notice now that's giving the 3D impression. Okay, so continuing on. So if you want to make sure that you use the same ones to line it up, then take your time when you first spray them and mark them. 
because I didn't do that and I also altered them, it's making it a lot more difficult for me to know which bit created which bullet hole. So it's probably a bit of a tip, especially for those that aren't confident with doing the freehand part of this. see this one lines up so it makes it a lot easier to straight away get that shaded in feel free to experiment as well you might find your own method that works even better than this okay last one Okay, so again, now coming in freehand, just bringing some of those shadows down. You can see a lot more 3D now. Okay, so now it's time to add some highlights. You can do some highlights running along that bottom edge. Same thing, we'll utilize the paper template just to give us a nice, sharp, defined highlight. So again, I'm pretty much just aiming for the bottom of that template. Up nice and close, paint on, paint off. See that's given that bottom edge a more three-dimensional appearance. So that's where the light's picking up on that, that damaged edge. So I'm just moving that paper template around again until I'm happy with matching up the torn paper edge with where I'm spraying. I'll come back in freehand in a second. I'll just get this done for these three. That looks pretty cool. So I'm going to do a bit of a highlight in here as well. So just underneath. Pick out a bit brighter there. Switching back to my transparent black, I'm going to shade up this area a little bit. Moving on to the other ones, same deal. Get our paper template nice and close so that that highlights nice and bright. You basically want to eliminate the edge where that gray meets the green or whatever other base color you're working on top of because you can do this effect on any base color. 
doesn't necessarily have to be this green. I just thought it'd kind of be cool. Last one. Finish them off with those uh, highlights. Again, if you get a bit of overspray in there, you can always come back in with your black. Black will just opaque over the top of it, no problem. I'll just finish off these ones with the transparent black as well, a bit more shading. So here we have the completed canvas. Really easy effect to achieve. Definitely give it a go. Try it over different base colors. Bring your own sort of flair to it. I do hope that you enjoyed checking out this video tutorial. If you wanna learn more, check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.